Welcome back to the Build Show Network. Steve Basic here, live from Columbia, Missouri, Hilltop Arrow Project. And today we're going to talk about solving real problems. As an architect, one of the things that sometimes gets forgotten or maybe not quite solved for is how do we run mechanical utilities or some part of the utilities through the structure, right? Somehow that always seems to be forgotten. Eh, HVAC guy can figure it out. Yeah, we'll have, you know, that, that problem, we can solve that later. No, no time like the present to solve, to solve a problem. So here we are, Hilltop Arrow Project. We're probably talking, I don't know, 2,500 square foot house. But what's really interesting is our ventilation system is made up of this three inch pipe, right? It's a corrugated pipe, but believe it or not, we probably have close to about 350 linear feet of this pipe that has to run through this house. Well, you just don't run 350 linear feet of three inch pipe anywhere in the house. You have to plan for it. You have to provide opportunity for the HVAC guy to be successful. So as an architect and I'm designing spaces, I'm always looking for how do I find the right space? How do I make those spaces connect? How do I get a couple hundred feet of that three inch pipe from the basement up here and into the bedrooms to ventilate them successfully? Well, you can see here, I'm in the bathroom, right? We have a bathtub. All I did was I made this part of the linen closet, the end of it, the part that is at the foot of the tub, I made that a vertical chase. So. We have six pipes that have the ability to come up from the basement and get up into that chase. So in an effort to maintain our air barrier continuity in the ceiling, we drop that chase down and you can see we have a series of these three inch pipes. Now you would say, well, you know, we're losing ceiling space, et cetera, but we're only lost about four or five inches in an eight foot ceiling. So we're really not at a loss. There's not much happening up here in the linen closet. But if we chase that around, you see here, we have a chase over the doorway, which when this all gets drywalled, it's gonna seem perfectly natural. That turns in, we have one of the bedroom closets here. So a couple of those pipes get dropped and you can see we have one of the vents here inside the closet. So our ERV supply is actually gonna be dumping it into the closet. So that air can mix up in the closet and kind of dissipate into the air that is already in the closet and then migrate into the bedroom. So we're just not dumping that different temperature air into the bedroom, that it has the ability to uh, mix with that air in there. Well, that chase continues down over the doorway of the bedroom, over the doorway of the bedroom, and then basically the last two pipes here also terminate in the closet for the same reason as the other one and our HVAC system is then complete. Let's jump back to the studio. We'll pull up some plans and we'll talk about how from the initial design how we can use some of these spaces behind bathtubs, linen closets, etc. and how do we use those to our advantage so that we can put the people that we work with and, and the people that are part of the team and we're doing our job put them in a position for success. I'll see you back at the studio. Hey everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that little trip out at the Hilltop Arrow project. We uh, looked at the routing of some of the ventilation tubes. At uh, the Zender system, it's a very, very, very slick system. I mean, those three inch pipes, they bend, they twist, they uh, go around corners nice and easy. The layout is pretty darn easy just got to find a little home for them and uh, most of all Zender you know we basically send our drawings we get the initial thoughts and uh, they do the whole layout for us size the system set up how much CFM per uh, grill there whether you're exhausting or supplying but just a great system so anyways got big red here let's dive in printed out a couple of the plans here to look at that we got from Zender. So let's uh, see what they did for us. All right, everybody. So as you can see, we printed out a couple plans here. 
got a big red in hand. And uh, what we're looking at is the background was the floor plan that I drew that we sent to Zender and then they superimposed their layout over the top. So the <clears throat> order in which these things happen is somewhat, I draw up the floor plan and you can see here, here's the bedroom. We have closet wall there and you can see the exterior walls here for these two bedrooms. And there's the hall wall, demising wall between the two rooms and closet there. And then obviously the doors. And then that's out into the hall here. Stairway down, bathroom that you saw in the video. Get that the door there. And then here's that tub that we spoke of. Here's that chase that we have there. Um, and then the basement plan. You can see here basically the outline of the basement and the Zender unit in the basement. I have a couple uh, <clears throat> previous videos where we talked in depth about Zender and working with uh, their uh, organization and people and getting the layout and getting all the systems just right, sizing them, all of that stuff. So go check those out. But today was how we routed some of these pipes. So you can see they labeled these pipes going up. Well, when they go up into the building, they need a place to go. So we created this chase that was basically the end of the linen closet and the foot of the tub. So, oops, you can see four supply tubes and two extraction tubes. So, basically, pulling air out the extraction and four supplying. Now, those four supplying are two to each of the bedrooms, and you can have a bedroom here, and we have a bedroom here. And um, <clears throat> so, I did the initial layout where we put a linen closet there intentionally, and obviously, it feeds the bathroom. But... The nice thing about having that linen closet there is we can continue this soffit and that gets pipes from that vertical chase into a horizontal chase that comes across and then it plugs in to the back side of this bedroom closet. Right? Well, that allows us to basically drop the ceiling across here like that. And then build a chase here and drop the ceiling in these areas. All right. So what that allows, again, as you saw in the video, those pipes come up. They go through that chase. And two of them go here. And then two of them continue down here. So, and then the uh, that's the four supplies, the two extraction are up here and they're extracting from the bathroom. So you're supplying here and the idea is that that air will migrate and get pulled back down there. So <clears throat> those, you know, they stay cleanly out of sight. The other thing that's important there is that, you know, we have our drywall in place and then those soffits, they got built down from there and then drywall placed in there but then that allows those pipes to run on that soffit and you know we're talking here you know, about four and a half inches so on an eight foot 96 inch here you're still you know 92 inches so you're at a little over seven and a half feet at the door there so everything still works works really nice but more importantly it gets those ducts over and you know, we didn't know exactly the size or how many, so preliminary um, soffit layout. We send it to Zender. Zender comes back with the plan and says, okay, well, in this case here, we only have six tubes, so we had more than enough room there, but we would obviously make whatever adjustment we need, whether it's a depth of the soffit or a width of the soffit to get to this. I mean, based on experience and and having two bedrooms here, I know we weren't having, you know, 14 or 15 pipes coming up there, that it was going to be a handful. So um, we figured that the soffit that we allowed would have been more than adequate. Um, the other thing to 
note in the plan why we're here is, you know, this is a closet here. And there's a closet here. Let me just highlight those a little more. Notice where the supplies are being dumped. They're being dumped inside the closet. They could have very easily have gone in here and come out a sidewall into the room here. Now, a couple things are at play. One, if I close these doors on the closet and I'm not in the habit of opening them a lot, you get the tendency to get, you know, no movement of the air in there. It gets a little stale. Um, it's not the worst thing, but it's always best that if we can churn the air, I mean, when we overturn it using the ventilation system, we want to overturn it to the widest spectrum, right? So we want to be out here in our operation, not here in our overturning of ventilation. So we want a really wide spectrum, not a short spectrum. So dumping it in the closet, well, it does a couple things. One, puts the air in the closet, makes, you know, pressurizing the closet, makes the air in the closet that was existing move into the bedroom and then the bedroom air is going to be under that slight negative that we have the extraction from the bathroom. So we get this nice kind of flow of air moving through there. But more importantly, it starts in the bed, uh, the uh, closet there in both cases. And it starts by moving some of that air out of the closet that was in there and replacing it with the new ventilated air. The other thing that it does there, as opposed to, say, putting the vents as a sidewall vent, if I put my bed here and here, and I place these sidewall vents, well, what I'm at the risk of is when you're laying in these beds, that this air coming out, and, and it's not a lot, um, I think it's, yeah, 24 CFM times 2, so it's really not... A whole lot of CFM coming out of there, but there could be the potential for a noticeable difference in air temperature by the supplied air coming through there and the temperature of the room. And so you don't want to have, you know, the slightest comfort issue of having a different temperature of air being blown across the bed while people are trying to sleep there. So dumping it in the closet while it pushes that air that is uh, somewhat static in the closet out. The other thing it does is it allows that ventilated air to be tempered before it really becomes part of the room, right? So it's mixing with that closet air, getting to a somewhat normalized temperature, and then migrating into the room here. And by migrating, you know, these are bifold doors, so they're pretty air leaky, you know, they don't really touch so you have some air movement there you have air movement underneath them over the top of them the other thing you can do that i have done is you know you can put louver doors on the closet um you can cut a vent up in the closet if you're really worried about it but you know typically bifold doors again you're not you're not it's not like you're dumping two or three hundred cfm in that closet you're dumping you know 24 cfm so Anyways, you know, that tempering that air before we drop it into the bedroom, so it kind of gets into the bedroom by proxy, using the air in the closet to temper it, and then migrate into that bedroom. So, anyways, um, it's a neat little trick. We've done this tons of times, different houses where, you know, again, like I said in the video, we're in this case here, we're probably somewhere around 350 linear feet of three inch pipe. Um, and it is flexible, but that's still a lot of pipe that we got to run around this house and find ways to go from the unit in the basement to, you know, in this case, each of the bedrooms and extract from the bathroom on the second floor. So, you know, as an architect, I like to account for you know, everything that I possibly can. So having these vertical chases and drop soffits and different pieces of the building um, move and conform to our needs to get that 
350 linear feet of uh, pipe run around. So, anyways, that's it. Zender, like I said, they did the layout. Always do a great job. They're great teammates. You know, go check out their systems. Their systems are top shelf also. So, um, you know, in my opinion, they're as good as it gets out there for ventilation. So, anyways, there you have it. All right. Big Red Conquer again. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, been doing this a while now. Go check out those videos. There's a bunch from there. Go check out my colleagues, Matt, Brent, Wade, Jake, Drywall Shorty, Zach, Detmore, Mechanical Hub, and Design Build Doug. We got a bunch of people laying down a whole bunch of videos and a whole bunch of information every week. So go check it out. If you want more from me, you can find me on Instagram at Stephen Basic Architect. Um, and uh, you can also find me on the Unbuild It podcast. So I'm alive and well there with Jake Bruton and Peter Yost. And uh, every two weeks we drop a new podcast where we're talking about some pretty cool topics about building or business or our favorite books about building, all kinds of stuff. So great stuff. We get tons of experience there and uh, we're willing to share it. So anyways, go check it out. And until next time, long live our buildings.